Jared, I don't even need to tell you how awesome the PSP is. This portable little powerhouse of an RPG machine can play all kinds of Persona games and PSP games that are just so much fun. And it can also play PS1 games. And with emulation, it can even play Super Nintendo games. But it's got a bit of a problem. The video output on this thing is really hard to work with. And the tiny controls, uh, they cramp my hands after long grinding sessions. So, Jared, I'm, I'm asking you, buddy, your modding skills are amazing. Can you do something about this and make this, this little RPG powerhouse work a little more perfectly with my professional sort of lifestyle of reviewing and streaming RPGs from this powerhouse? Thanks, buddy. Alright, so welcome back to the show. Um, as you can see here, some parts from the last episode, if you watched, where we actually took this PSP motherboard and wired them in one-to-one -to, -one to make sure all the inputs were actually working. This wasn't actually here at the time, but this was just a bit of a theory and a carry-on from where we were. Anyway, so as you can see, all our wires are kind of pulled back off. Um, the makeshift controller we had there, and we're actually going to work on making it go into a controller port off a PS2 and correctly work with a Sony PlayStation 2 controller without having to modify the controller. So there's a bit of coding involved, a bit of attenuation of signals, some analog manipulation and just a few little cool things we're going to be doing there. So I think first thing we'll do is focus on the joystick section, which is pretty easy for the 3000 uh, and two models uh, because you can actually pull a joystick directly off that and solder the pads straight off the actual joystick without having to modify this plug at all which I'm going to show you this episode we didn't look at last time with the 2000 models it's quite good though as well because the pads are generally under here four pads so either way it's quite easy there's just a little variation in that with your analog sticks but you need to make sure you get all four lines and it's very important that we orientate these the correct way. So without going into it too much further, I think it would make more sense if we actually start delving into how this analog stick is pinned out and we'll solder onto it now and uh, deal with the next bit. So let's get into it.
so you got your PSP back on the shell here and the top plate of the analog stick. Now here's a complete assembled one with analog stick and everything as you can see there. We're interested in the internals for this part here as an explanation of what we're actually doing and why we're doing it. So the joystick right here consists of two elements, the X and the Y axis, a ground and a voltage, but these are what are known as your wipers. Okay, so if we have a look closely, as you go up to the corner, they both pull to the corner, right? Same with the other direction, except they pull further apart. So they'd be opposing values. And say if you went to this corner, it's a combination of one and then some in the other top corner there. And left and right is independent, it doesn't move, and up and down they don't move. So you would get different values on your X and Y axis and they'd kind of correspond between each other. And the resistance goes up the further you go along this track or the closer you go to the original point, it's zero resistance. Okay, so I'll put a little graph up here and it'll make a little bit more sense or drawing to be exact. And I'll show you why we're doing all this. So as you can see in this diagram here, we have the relationships of X and Y. Kind of makes a bit more sense as to what we're doing there, as I've showed it physically working. Okay, so we're gonna have to use our PS2 controller analog stick, obviously, for our analog input for the PSP, because it has a joystick. Now, as you can see here, we've got a few little things going on here. This is our Arduino Nano, and this will be what attenuates most of our inputs uh, and pushes it back to the PSP from the controller and makes sense of it all. And this here is our little breakout board for this, which is a dual channel digital potentiometer. And what that'll actually be used for is to interpret the analog sticks inputs coming off the controller and feed it back to the PSP in a language you can kind of understand. Wow, well, with a bit of code which we've got written out and we'll go through later. But it's dual channel so that you can control the X and the Y. So I'll give you a bit of a demonstration of the working prototype of this and we'll carry on with where we were building up this bit next. So just sit back and enjoy the rough handycam work. It's pretty awful but uh, it gets the point across.
All right, so now that's all done, and we've got the digital potentiometer all sorted as well. We're gonna to have to look at taking these little spidery leads off and breaking them out into a usable board, which we've got a little breakout board right here. Uh, theoretically, you could just splice on the end of every lead and put a bigger one on for the, for the nano, so it's plug and play. It would so save you a lot of soldering, but I believe if you've come this far with the mod, the breakout board is best because if you run into any problems along the way like shorts or anything like that, it's easily identifiable on this board here. And you can pin everything out and kind of have a really good idea where everything's going because we've done this quite a few times and this ended up being the best way for us. So I'm just gonna start pinning these into this board, show you where everything's kind of going and what we're doing next. So just follow along and um, this should save you a lot of time down the track.
right, so I'm just sitting here with Tyler and we're going to be hooking into the final episode of building the consoleized Game Boy Advance, which we call the Super Brad Boy. He's got it here, so stay tuned and enjoy. Neon on the black top, there's a gentle rain downtown, shadow pooling underneath me as it follows on the ground. Kissed you when I saw you. Okay, so we have a PS2 controller board here and we're going to fit the controller six wires out into player one slot now. Those last six that you just saw us put on, so pretty straightforward, soldered these into the correct places, follow along as I show you, and a 10km resistor goes between two of the pins. And we should be away, so let's get into it. Alright, we'll just get that in focus. Okay, that looks good. Alright, so there you have it. It's still put together now. So um, I thought it might take a few seconds to thank some people. As you may or may not know, the laptop went missing, suspected stolen. So we haven't got it anymore. Um, we lost about three years worth of work. So thankfully a lot of you who watched this and fans of the show and friends of mine all chipped in and we were able to get a new one and uh, really put us back on the foot. So we got three months worth of work done in about one week with this new rendering engine we got, which is really gonna speed things up a lot and it's really good. Anyway, so we'll do a bit of gameplay footage and we'll end the episode there. But next one we're gonna be looking at changing the aspect ratio and also getting 1080p out of the machine as well as some work with the memory cards and the automatic video out 
portion of this. So I hope you enjoyed and we'll see you next time.
Hey there, I'm Andy from the Beyond Synth Podcast. A big fan of what Jared does over here at Retro Revolutions. It's really cool stuff. And if you dig the kind of music that Jared plays during the show and the artists he features, you might want to check out beyondsynth.com. All right, it's a podcast. We've been doing it for over seven seasons. Not over seven seasons, seven seasons. Uh, but there's tons of episodes with uh, all the artists who make this awesome synth wave, retro wave, 80s nostalgia, electronic music, really cool stuff. And so if you dig that, you might want to check out Beyond Synth. It's a lot of fun. If you don't want to, that's okay too. But the most important thing is stay tuned right here to Retro Revolutions because Jared's got lots of awesome projects coming up. I look forward to seeing them, and I know you guys do too. And uh, yeah. So uh, have a lovely day. All right.